So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today we're going to be talking about one of the largest time thefts ever recorded. Uh, this was a violation by the East Penn Manufacturing Company. This article is written by Bowditch Attorneys. They're an attorney firm or a law firm. And you can check out the article down below. This is the largest ever FLSA verdict underscores, underscores importance of employer compliance with wage and hour laws. And it's exactly what happened today. $22 million uh, against the East Penn Manufacturing Company. And they violated the Fair Labor Standards Act or the FLSA of 1938. That act is really powerful. It governed, it created overtime pay, it created the minimum wage, it defined child labor standards. And so the, the Fair Labor Standards Act is really a seminal moment in employment uh, law in the United States. And it was actually almost entirely considered uh, unconstitutional up until uh, FDR threatened to pack the Supreme Court and eventually they decided that it was constitutional. But over time, or sorry, minimum wage has been struck down many times throughout the years and and uh, it's there are uh, prior to 1938 and as a result it was mostly considered unconstitutional however uh, so they did this mostly seeking unpaid overtime which this is pretty interesting the unpaid overtime was actually about uh, getting in and out of protective gear and showering and let me be clear here generally speaking Situations like this uh, showering after work uh, is not considered um, uh, compensable time. Leaving work is not com considered compensable time. Uh, several years back, the uh, several years back, Amazon uh, made a uh, made headlines because it was taking, I think, like I don't know, twenty minutes for their employees to exit. Amazon, the, the warehouse, because they were being uh, metal detected and searched, I think. And, and that was considered not compensable time. But because changing in and out of protective gear and showering were considered necessary and indispensable to the employee's work, they, they found that they failed to appropriately account for this, resulting in employees not being paid overtime in their 40 hours per week, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the trial took 30 days, and t dozens of workers testified about this and regarding their performance of unpaid work and calculations of back wages. And they went through all the clock in and out times and concluded after 30 days that East Penn was required to pay the affected workers uh, donning, doffing, and showering time, uh, resulting in $22 million for the, uh, for the employees. And the Department of Labor is looking to double it, uh, which is an additional penalty available under FLSA. So this could be a really serious and, and sort of uh, ending uh, decision from the uh, for, for the company, but they did truly violate uh, Fair Labor Standards Act. That's a fairly common uh, requirement. Uh, you know, oftentimes cleaning up and showering is not considered. Um, but the East Penn uh, Company was is a battery company, and the East Penn Company is a company that is. Uh, you know, when you work around lead, you have to shower up, you have to get ready, and that's that's what's being covered here. Um, hopefully they learned their lesson. Hopefully many companies around the United States have learned their lesson to uh, prohibit time theft and to prohibit this sort of behavior. Uh, a good HR manager will know how to best uh, address these and, and a good payroll co um, group would absolutely understand this. This is basic as far as I'm considered, concerned. There are oftentimes time theft that is a little bit questionable in terms of 
<clears throat> time frames and things like th of that nature, but this is not. This is pure incompetence, uh, in my opinion. That's it for Human Resources for the People. I'll see you tomorrow. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.